There's a, a fascinating four-part documentary series beginning on October 1st on NITV and SBS um, called Rebel with a Cause. Uh, four really fascinating documentaries about four people who are so interesting. And to uh, talk about these uh, four films and uh, and the concept behind them and everything is the producer of Rebel with a Cause, Kit Williams. Kit, welcome to Movie Metropolis. <laughs> Good to Thank see you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Pleasure. Yeah. Now, this this is such a fascinating uh, insight into Neville Bonner, Pat O'Shane, Udguru Nunasel, Nun, 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 uh, who used to be Kath Walker. Udguru Yeah, mm-hmm. my pronunciation is shocking. And Tiger Bales. <laughs> Tell me about the concept and thinking behind making this four-part series. So the original concept uh, comes from uh, Dina Curtis and um, Dina's a um, Arunda, um, uh, Arunda, um, oh gosh, sorry. Um, She's she's from Central Desert, Arunda Wapri woman, um, who I met out at Karma many years ago when we were out working at Karma Productions. Um, And the idea behind it really was about celebrating the lives of First Nations trailblazers. Um, And so originally it was pitched to NITV as a a kind of like magazine style show, very simplistic, few interviews, bit of archive and that sort of thing. But as we started developing the idea and realising that it was a bit like a hero's journey and that there was a, you know, a narrative structure of the character going on this journey and what was at stake for them? What were they um, wanting to achieve? Um, The archive told us a different story and the interviews that um, we did with various family members and friends of these characters, because three of, three of our four characters have passed away now. Mm. So, um, we had to work a lot in the archive of interviews that had been done by these characters across different, you know, across the, the time period of their life when they were famous public figures. Um, and we started to realise that actually there's a much uh, richer story there. Um, and so what be, what was just a magazine style show turned into this sort of, you know, bio, sort of like a biopic um, history of Australia's, yeah, political history I guess so looking at it from that through the black lens uh working with four different Aboriginal directors on the each episode um so that's that's kind of how it 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 had a a sort of transformation across the series from the beginning to the end and I think what we've come out with at the other end is um is it an engaging story about what these people live through in their life like Pat O'Shane is still alive she's still uh, she's still working hard in politics up in Cairns. She's running for local election up there at the moment. Um, and in her episode is really still at the coalface of um, issues around voter suppression up in Northern Australia um, with the AEC sort of talking about that federal election back in May 22. So, yeah, that's where the original idea came from, yeah. Well, it really is a, a, a ter- terrific idea, and I found all four stories so um, fascinating. Uh, obviously, uh, there's been a lot of research. Uh, you found lots of archival footage for all four, um, you know, people. Uh, getting all that, getting access to that, and then obviously working with your four uh, First Nations directors, uh, it's so interesting how uh, all of that was put together. Yes. Um, I mean, I love archive and I've I've come to love it even more. Um, I think we were also working with an amazing archive producer, one of Australia's best um, lady called Naomi Hall, who works for a company, who runs a company called Research Engine, who has been working amongst the archives since the 80s, you know, so she's really familiar with where things are in different collections. So when we started the work and we were, you know, we went out and spoke to the families about the idea of what we wanted to do and we got them on board looking through their private collections and materials that they wanted to share um, and then working with Nomi and the public collections. So what was out there, sort of building these repertoires of material that we could work with, getting screeners and then developing the scripts 
building the questions for the interviews, sort of, you know, developing it that way. Um, and then going and shooting the materials and bringing that back and then allowing the archive to speak to the contemporary stories that we were developing um, in the films themselves. So if the, if, say, for example, Tiger, Tiger's, you know, he passed away in 2016. So um, we, EJ worked on the story of the family returning back to uh, Theodore where Tiger grew up and the this, this sort of the family remembering him, remembering his story. And we're always going back to this contemporary moment in country or same with the um, Uduru story, working with the family around the Cup Murray that they this special um, sort of big feast that they, a uh, ground feast. But so a lot of the archive came through, comes through in relationship to those kind of contemporary moments. But of course, there's these issues around the passing away protocols of Aboriginal communities where, and, you know, these are, these I think these are questions that are case by case. So there's a lot of consultation work in these projects mm. around checking, making sure that, you know, people that it might be that Pat's family is okay, but maybe there's some other people in the, in the work that needs also to be spoken to. So in Tiger's episode, there's some footage of a, the 1988 bicentennial protests. And there's some fellas up the front who are all painted up front of the protests that are all painted up. And it took me about a month and a half to actually track down where those fellas were from mm. and then managed to you know, find Bobby who was in uh, Gapuak up there in Arnhem land. And, you know, yeah, that's my family. Yeah. Some of those old fellas have passed away. Yeah, that's fine. You can, we're really proud to be a part of this. So there's been a lot of that sort of consultation work. Um, but yeah, it's, it, I, I think probably it's like the most complicated in terms of working in the archive, but then for the directors and the editors that they were working with, the com what we found also was that the archive was incredibly confronting as well because uh, the representation of Aboriginal people and of Aboriginal issues in Australian media, mainstream media, um, the discourses are not necessarily um, positive. And so there's been issues around representation, uh, around like racism, racism in in mainstream archive around how 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 people are being represented what their issues are what how they're dis discussing things uh what the agenda is that they've got on the table what the land rights protests were about um and so that was very confronting for the directors uh and they talk about that uh, a little bit um in you know in the in the sort of writings that they've got about it afterwards just that trying to make the most of that feeling, that uncomfortable feeling of, you know, oh, you know, in your Drew's episodes, like, oh, we, we're going to decide whether we want the natives to be a part of the constitution and sort of yeah. it's very condescending and and kind of patronising. And um, and so we just, you know, CO, the director of Ujuri's episode, he just decided to just, he wanted that in there. He wanted the audience to feel it to feel that time, that sense of um, how the media was representing that referendum idea, but also noticing how much as a nation or a society we've moved on or we haven't moved on, you know, whether we're still really sort of uncomfortable with that sort of material or not. Um, it bears witness to that, I think. That's what we're most proud of is that we've been able to not only tell these stories with first nation with first person perspectives. So Pat, Neville, Tiger and Ujuru all tell their own story in their own words. But also we've been able to augment those stories with eyewitness accounts from family and friends. And then also on top of that, news stories, which I guess in a kind of, you know, which evidence those experiences that that our characters were having. And it brings home the intimate experiences of what it is to be a public figure dealing with, you know, the wicked problems that we have in this country around, you know, the legacies of the colonial project and uh, Aboriginal uh, dispossession and 
all, all of the issues around that and, and where we are today with all of the issues that are, you know, ongoing that we're all living through as a society, trying to bring those to the surface in a way that's um that celebrates these characters that we're trying to do that so there's a lot (laughs) there's a lot to it yeah there is a lot i'm so impressed by hearing all of that and and the uh i mean congratulations on navigating and maneuvering your way through all of that and the protocols and the issues and uh and so on. It's so interesting. As an aside, I must say, uh, with the colonial uh, comments that you made and uh, how um, deleterious that has been to uh, First Nations people. But of course, uh, we've we've had uh, uh, a comment from uh, an Aboriginal senator who uh, seems to think that wasn't an issue. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, yeah. I'm. I think probably the referendum um, voice to parliament is something that. I mean, for us, we made this series, uh, we, you know, we started this work way before the referendum was announced and um, we, you know, we've, we've been working on this project and it's for us, it's, it's more of a longitudinal project in that it's more about people and their stories and working with the histories of their, um, of them telling their stories. And we hope that the work endures and that um, these stories of these characters are able to be shared uh, with school children and so that they have a deeper understanding mm. of the history of what, uh, you know, members in our community have lived through and at a very intimate level as well, you know, sort of there's some fairly um, raw ideas and concepts in the series where people are very frank about what they have lived through, you know, sort mm. of racial slurs or you know Neville Bonner being yelled at across the road at par- you know by the tent embassy mob but meanwhile inside parliament house just dealing with structural inequality and racism on a completely different uh level in terms of from parliamentarians themselves just not being invited out at night time when he was down at the senate or you know just being incredibly lonely in places like that where he didn't have he didn't no one had his back Mm. In that, you know, in those instances. So I think um, our hope, and because we, you know, it, the series hasn't been made for NITV for this particular moment in time, for us, we, we feel like it's an enduring series that um, yep. speaks to a much broader historical understanding. And we hope to kind of, you know, make more. Oh, hopefully you do because they, they are they are so interesting. I love the way you use the title "Rebel with a Cause," which is a nice play on <laughs> on another title. And uh, and but that brings out the activism and so on of these four people. But uh, was that a, a title that you came up with very quickly? Yeah, and uh, you know, as an aside, Pat O'Shane loves it. She loves it. I mean, originally the, t- the the series was called just Black Portraits. That's what we just, you know, that's what we were referring to. It's really easy when you ring up people and you're trying to get access to locations or, you know, ask people if they'd be interested in sharing their story or, you know, it's, oh, it's a Black Portrait series. But Rebel With a Cause, um, is, you're, it has this endearing quality that, and it's also it really touches on that idea of, you know, at the beginning of each episode, we try to build like a hook, which is what it is that is the fire in the belly of that of that rebel, you know, like Pat. She talks about, you know, I was at school and I was standing next to my dad and the teacher said, you know, Pat doesn't have the brains to go into high school. Mm. And she, I remember that moment and I said, I'll show you. And it's just, you know, it's Pat O'Shane in a nutshell. That is, that is her modus operandi you know and she says I'm you know I'm going out with my gloves on and she she is and so you're with her you understand that political drive and what it is that is she's up against and we watch her time and time again through all of these different experiences in her life where she was Queensland's first Aboriginal female teacher you know she was confronted with a curriculum that was racist and in, in fact made Aboriginal people's experiences of you know the world invisible wasn't in the curriculum and so she she changed the curriculum through the textbook literally out the window and said right 
you guys are going to start talking about your experiences, uh, you know, the history books, what you know about what was going on. So that and her work um, in the Department of Aboriginal Affairs, um, developing the, the New South Wales land rights legislation and, you know, this, the, the, the challenges associated with just coming up against the prejudice inside of the legislative environments um, as a, you know, and then her work as a magistrate, as an example, you know, and Tiger's the same, you know, experiencing racism in a central Queensland community, um, being not allowed to get on the school bus, having to ride horses to school because they couldn't get on the bus. Um, and then somehow becoming the school captain in 1968 um, and then sort of taking on that leadership role just all through his life, just sort of getting activated by the Black Panther Party and all of the amazing politics that was going on at the time um, in Queensland and then with the tent embassy. Um, so, you know, Ujuru, she talks about I was a left-hander and my teacher made me become a right-hander and I knew from that moment that I was going to, you know, I was going to fight the system. <laughs> so I, to be to be able to express myself the way that I need to express myself, mm. you know, so you you sort of catch you catch these these moments in people's lives that have been recorded through the archive and really um, explore those ideas uh, in these different story beats in their lives. Yeah. Well, again, well done on that because it, it's absolutely fascinating. And it's uh, uh, I'm so glad you mentioned uh, using these documentaries in schools and uh, educational purposes. They're so important. And um, I, I must ask you, um, there are four 51-minute uh, documentaries. The editing process in any documentary is uh, fun and games, of course, deciding what to uh, leave out and what stays in. And I can imagine to uh, structure these very tightly in that uh, sort of time frame must have been uh, quite a task. Yes. Uh, and, I mean, again, I think it was testament to um a fabulous archive producer, Nomi Hall and Lily Powell, who helped us through that archive process. But also um, we had fabulous editors on board. So um, uh, Fiona Strain was the editor of Tiger and Pat's episode. Um, Pip Hart was the editor of Ujuru's episode and uh, Scott Walton uh, was the editor of um, um, uh, Neville Bonner's episode, Working with Douglas. So they're all experienced editors and, I mean, I think the it's just hours and hours and hours of archive material, but mm. we, had a, I, we had an idea of that because, you know, these were retrospective historical stories, there were key moments that we recognised were important to tell where we saw our rebels up against it and where their drive and their uh, vision and their purpose was being confronted by you know or the, a hurdle that they had to overcome and so we we knew and also you know working very closely with the families as well they had a first-hand insight into those kind of more private moments when um the character you know when our character is struggling um I think this comes out quite strongly in um, Tiger Bowles's episode where, you know, we see in the archive material that he's up against it as the New South Wales Land Council chair and he's out there very vocally um, communicating the position of the Land Council around um, self-determination, uh, self-management, uh, self-sufficiency of Aboriginal people as the main... Um, like land rights being about um, economic independence and the ability, you know, land as a resource that enables people to have their own economic independence. That's the kind of um, a beautiful way. I think in Neville's episode, Gary Foley articulates that incredibly clearly. Um, and I think what happens is, is that Tiger's under so much pressure that he they, he talks about, you know, he comes home back to Theodore to kind of like blow off some steam and relax. And But the family remembers the phone just wouldn't stop ringing and it was ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing. And he, he went home to have a rest, but he ended up just picking up the phone. And so they 
they they kind of they felt that you know as a leader who was under so much pressure he was just constantly um under the pump and so the stress eventually got to him you know it was you you aren't able to sustain that level of leadership mm. um Ujuri's episode talks about that too so in the edit the editors and the directors and the team we were trying to find these moments where there was you know this kind of live wire touch point where the the public persona of these characters which we were seeing very clearly in the archive and then hearing these backstories through the families and being able to work with the private collections you know like Neville Bonner's letters to his wife um and Heather Bonner's diary where she talks about when he in 75 before the land rights legislation in 76 which he was instrumental in terms of being the chairman of that committee senate committee um he puts forward a motion uh in the senate for compensation for aboriginal people so to say that you know um to compensate for that for dispossession of land and he gets it through the senate but he never, it never ever got through the House of Representatives. And that has just been covered over by the tides of time, that motion for compensation. Not many people know about that. But the reason we knew about it was because there was something in Heather Bonner's diary that said that when he was putting that compensation forward, he said to her in a quiet moment at night time, you know, this is going to be potentially political suicide for me, but I've got a conscience and I need to put it forward. So we were able to kind of get under the bonnet of these, you know, um, sort of public personas to try to understand what was at stake for for these characters. And and in Ujuru's case, she breaks, you know. Um, the family were um, generous enough to let us talk about her suicide attempt that she you know, she 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 really was under so much pressure as one of the faces of the referendum campaign in, in the 60s um, and also getting a lot of pressure from her, her son, Dennis Walker, and others just, you know, around the pressure of that and she 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 couldn't handle it. So being able to 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 bring those private archives to life where there is a recording of her talking about that and um the family going yeah let's share it let's talk about it or or experiences of being a domestic in Brisbane in the 1930s and 40s where she's being predated on by um the men of the house you know and that's a very common story with um women that were working as domestics in um right through Australia you know um so she was brave enough to kind of articulate it and the family backed us to want to get that out. So, mm. yeah. Gee, there's so many backstories and interesting perspectives and so on. You almost need a fifth documentary which looks at the making of <laughs> uh, these uh, four documentaries. It's, uh, it's it's really quite fascinating. Well, I'm so glad that um, from October 1st um, these four documentaries will be screening each week on NITV. Uh, and SBS. Uh, uh, so, um, Kit, I must ask you two very quick final questions. Um, uh, you've produced or been involved in production of so many uh, documentaries I've noticed and, and films and so on. How do you decide what you take on? Oh, my gosh. That's a great question. I think... I think you hear an idea, sometimes you just know because it's really intriguing and then other times um, it wakes you up in the middle of the night. Um, y- yeah, I think it it sort of stays with you, the idea. You hear something, you hear a story about something and it stays with you and and I just think, I mean, I for me anyway, as a producer, um, it, there's a curiosity and in some ways like making a film like any creative person would know it's sort of a bit you know you're giving birth to something you're giving birth to a um something that's going to be in the world and it's going to do its own work you know it does these films are going to do work on their own outside of the team that was behind them making them and that you know that's our hope um but I think there's something in them where you're you've got this curiosity where you want to know more, you want to understand 
in a lot of ways, like each of these films deal with issues of racism. And I think for me, it's been a very interesting process to work through that, particularly as a filmmaker and work inside of the public archive where you can see very clearly that those you know, in an academic sense, those discursive regimes, that kind of structure, ways of thinking about um, Aboriginal affairs in this country for people and how you see that playing out through, you know, the way that journalists speak about things or the way the images are stuck together. And then the ability to kind of tease that apart has been really great. So it that that's where the curiosity has been, I think. Um, for the directors... I, you know, I think when we originally decided talking about it, they all, they all had a very clear picture about who they wanted to, to, to tell this, to, who they wanted to tell the story about. They, you know, um, and, uh, you know, and we were really lucky in that everyone that we spoke to were, were very keen to be a part of it. And, um, you know, the, the characters like, yeah, the, the heroes or the or the families, you know. Mm. Tiger's family was, you know, no one has ever made a film about Tiger before. He's, you know, very well known in the community and he's a media icon, but no, no one had ever made his film. And so the the and the family had, you know, he died in 2016 and now they'd gone through their period of of mourning and like, yeah, okay, let's do this. And so each episode's been hard. I think I remember when we screened the film. Oh, sorry, I'm getting emotional. When we screened the film to um, Mundanara and Yarika at Rough Cut stage just to check everything, you know, there was a lot of tissues in the room because it was really hard for those guys to see their mm. father and all of those things and the way that what he did and what he was up against. They hadn't seen some of that material before. They didn't know some of that part of his story. And so also it's been a really powerful process for them as well in terms of, you know, celebrating. And that's what we say in our sort of, you know, these are celebrations of these mm. people's lives. Um, yeah. Fascinating stuff. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> it, absolutely. It, it, it tells me of your own passion, your interest, the way you want to tell stories and to... Uh, to have them out there uh, and seen and available. No, that's that's fantastic. So just very quick final question. Are you working on anything else at the moment? Um, um yeah, there's a few things in the works, but right now I'm about to have a big rest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on having a only because I'm, yeah, it's been an incredible journey, but, you know, the the um black politics making four films about you know sort of characters that are deep in black politics is um it's it's been it, it's been very intense very intense process and everyone involved in this show has been you know it's been a very intense process so i'll probably work on having a rest and then you know come back come back into the space with fresh eyes but you know watch this space <laughs> yeah. um I know Dean is working on some really great projects coming up but I don't think we can talk about those at the moment but yeah Inky Media um who's Dina Curtis's production company who she was the creator of this work um yeah lots of really great stuff coming out of Queensland with her excellent uh, and fair enough too you're entitled to a break <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we've been talking to Kit Williams, who's the producer of the four-part documentary series Rebel with a Cause, beginning October 1st on uh, NITV uh, and uh, four episodes screening each week and um, uh, an episode screening each week for four weeks and also on SBS. Highly recommended. Excellent stuff. Uh, and uh, Kit, thank you so much for talking with me. Thank you so much for um, yeah taking the time to want to ask us the questions because we're we're just so excited to share these stories with the world now. You know we've yeah we're really excited and and we really hope that you enjoy them. We, everyone out there, you know, yeah, it's 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 a it's a really enthralling journey through these lives. So thank you very much. I appreciate. I really appreciate it.
My pleasure. And certainly I, I want the audience to see these films. They're, they're really fascinating. Kit, thank you so much. Okay, lovely. Have a great day. See you you later. too. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.